Okay, so I have here a little mini version of the 5x5 five five cowl. There's actually five stitches of knitting and five stitches of purl and five stitches of knitting and I'm just going to pretend to bind this off using a three needle bind off. This is a little bit of a cheat but if you're not keen on getting out your darning needle and grafting the two ends of your cowl together, if you want something a little bit quicker and easier to close off your cowl, you can do a three needle bind off. This bind off is often used to very efficiently bind off both the front and back shoulders of a sweater or a vest where you take the live stitches from the front shoulder and then hold them together with the live stitches of the back shoulder and then you bind them off together as if they were one piece of fabric. So we can do the same with our little cowl sample here as well. So what I would do is I would take the live stitches out from this uh, this provisional cast on and you can see here is the end with the knot so I'm going to take this end and pull it through that last sort of crochet chain so this will unzip my crochet chain and as I am unzipping the provisional cast on I'm going to take my extra needle I'm taking a, another needle and I'm just going to pick up those live stitches So now I have my live stitches on this temporary needle here, but I actually want to orient the needle tips the same way. If I was using double pointed needles, that wouldn't be a problem. I could just slide this across and use that. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer the stitches to my other needle here so that I can hold them together like so. Okay, so with my other needle tip, I'm gonna just slide the stitches back onto this side. So now I have my two ends, my two live ends, organized on my two knitting needle tips. You can see that they're both facing the same direction, so the needle tips are both pointing in the same direction when the piece is folded. So pretend this is your big super long cowl, this could be super long here, uh, this one is just my little sample. And now what I want to do is I want to flip it so that the two good sides are together. So we'll pretend that the side with the more knit stitches here, that that side is going to be the good side. And I'm going to put those two sides together. So folding it like it's a sandwich, folding them together. So I have my good sides together, needle tips are together, and I have my working yarn here. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to bind off these two stitches, a pair of stitches, pretending that they are the same, pretending that they're one stitch. So in this case, because I'm going to be working purls here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to enter my needle into both stitches as if to purl. And then I'm going to wrap my yarn around counterclockwise as I would for a purl. I'm going to purl that stitch and then push both stitches off the two left hand needles. I'm going to do that again, entering my needle tip into the both of the stitches at the same time and then wrapping my yarn around counterclockwise, pulling one stitch up through those two, just sort of pretending those two stitches are one stitch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this first stitch over the second stitch to bind it off. Now in order to make that a little bit easier for everything, easier for my hands to manage, I'm going to move this working yarn to the back so that I have access to this first stitch. And then taking one of the needle tips, pick up that first loop and then toss it over the second loop and now I've bound off one stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my yarn again to the front so I can purl. Purl these two stitches together. Pulling both of those stitches off, move my yarn to the back, pick up this yarn, move it to the front, over that first stitch, Again, moving my yarn to the front so I can purl these two stitches together. Pushing them both off the left needle tips, moving my yarn to the back, taking the first stitch and lifting it, lifting it 
over top of the second stitch. And I'm just going to continue binding off in this way. Now, when I get to the knit section, rather than purling these stitches, I'm going to switch to knitting these stitches together. So you can see there's a stitch here on the left-hand needle and a stitch on the back left-hand needle. Put my needle tip into the first one, into the second one, wrap my yarn around as if to knit, and then I'm going to pull a stitch up between those two stitches, and then lift the first over the second on the right-hand needle, and that's binding off one more stitch. So I'm going to continue on again, knitting into both stitches on the two needles, lifting this first stitch on my right-hand needle over the second one to bind off. Now I'm at a section where I can purl again, so I'm going to move my yarn to the front and then purl these two stitches together. And I'm going to lift that stitch over and I have just one stitch left. So now that I have one stitch left, all I need to do is I'm going to break the yarn and then pull the end through that last stitch and that is bound off. So you can see how it's formed a very firm cast off and the two ends have been joined together. Now you can turn it inside out and that is going to be your three needle bind off. Now you can see here it doesn't make for a very smooth uh, seamless transition. You can definitely tell that there's a seam here. It looks like it was almost a sewn seam. It's a very strong, it's a very firm seam, but um, if you don't want it to be noticeable then you definitely want to go back and do the grafting process. But if you don't mind this and you want just a quick and easy way to uh, finish your work this is definitely something that you can do. Three needle bind off very handy in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm.